to deliver all the work this uh, this Christmas and, and through into the new year. No, today's uh, schedule. You've not, delivered, you've not delivered the promised schedule no, we for today. No, no, not so far, no. We wanted to be able to run five trains an hour into King's Cross and people bought tickets expecting us to do that and we failed on that. We're only getting a couple of trains an hour through uh, Finsbury Park and it's a very uncomfortable journey for passengers with luggage and so on. So the capacity we thought we would bring back today, we haven't. We've lost that for 24 hours. And we do get into this difficulty when people have bought tickets well in advance. I would like to pay tribute to the enormous response we've had from Transport for London on the tube system because I realise we've also caused them a lot of difficulties in moving people through Finsbury Park and they've stepped up very well to try and make it easier for people. As I said earlier, we now do all we can through the night to get King's Cross back for the morning for people who've got tickets tomorrow and perhaps didn't get away today. And then we'll monitor the rest of the programme through uh, the following week so that we get a full return to uh, normal service on Monday the 5th of January. What was the problem for today? Why were you not able to deliver the promised service today? What is it that overran? At King's Cross it's a very complicated uh, piece of work and we had two bits of equipment, some uh, heavy duty lifting equipment that failed through Christmas Day and into, uh, into Boxing Day. Once that happens with the, the quite complicated logistics with um, the new equipment coming from all over the country and the trains and so on, the thing just gets out of sequence and you have to make a call which uh, I made uh, yesterday evening during Boxing Day that we wouldn't be ready for this, uh, this morning and it was better to put in an alternative plan, disruptive though that has been. So we worked with the train operators and Transport for London through last night to put out communications and an alternative plan. And that's what you've seen today. At times today I realised that queuing at Finsbury Park did get up to at least a couple of hours. And I'm sure there's a couple of people watching this programme who uh, had to be delayed for even longer than two hours. But the, the plan we put in is now beginning to work, things are settled down. Uh, as I say, we're very grateful for TFL. No, sure, yeah, sure, no, sure I understand good. that. You, no, you, you have said that. I just want to be clear on this. If the equipment broke down on Christmas Day, why was it tea time yesterday that you told us King's Cross would be closed today? Because you, you work through Christmas Day and Boxing Day and you do recover some things and further things went wrong yesterday and then you try and put in a revised plan. But you have to make a call with about 12 hours to go whether you're going to be ready or not. Uh, which is a call I made yesterday, I'd much rather do that and put in an alternative plan and at least move people than keep quiet about it and hope it comes right when it's probably not going to come right and you have an even bigger problem this morning. So the contingency plan we put in this morning is what we would do if we did have an incident between Finsbury Park and King's uh, Cross. Some of the crowd management that TfL have put in is what they would do if Arsenal were playing at home at uh, the Emirates and that's what we've been running through the day. It was a little bit difficult to get it going first thing, but as I say, it has settled down now. And we're moving uh, a couple of trains an hour through Finsbury Park. We're shifting about a thousand people in, uh, in those two trains. But it does mean that they are having a very chilly wait for an hour uh, in and around the station yeah. until we could get them away this evening. Sure, to be clear, we, we've spoken to many people who've waited for a lot longer than two hours. But in terms of compensation, one thing we hear from a lot of people is a complaint that... Uh, that they won't get full compensation for taxis and the like, for alternatives that they have to turn to, and then that they get vouchers which they can't use in the way they want to. What do you say to those complainants? I, I, I really don't want to duck an issue tonight, given that Network Rail has caused all these problems, but the issue of compensation between passengers and the train operators really is a matter for them. Uh, we will obviously pay out some compensation to the train operators, both in, in arranging this work anyway and in the fact it's all overrun, but individual things, I would suggest anybody watching this programme or uh, reflecting on the very difficult journeys they've had today does that through the websites and the train operators rather than through Network Rail. It is an issue between the, uh, the passengers and the train operators. And of course therein lies part of the problem, that, that it is a fragmented industry with different people, different parties blaming each other and the public doesn't know where to turn or well, who I was, to blame. I don't think I... If I could correct you, I don't think I blamed anybody there. I just tried to give people advice as to who they should contact. Uh, we could talk about a fragmented industry another day, but right now I want to get back to try and making this service work. So what do you say to I the... Uh, the, the enormous growth we have had and we will continue to have from the investment we're making. And what do you say to the regulator that has started an investigation and to the transport secretary who has asked for answers? 
We were already in discussion with both those organisations even uh, before the incidents today happened and I'm sure we will continue those discussions as soon as everybody's got through this difficult time, restored the service and then we'll reflect on those in January. OK, Robin Gisby, thank you very much. Thank you. Managing Director of Network Rail there outside King's Cross Station. Uh, Finsbury Park, which indeed Robin Gisby mentioned there, is where many people turned to. That was the back 